So you want to buy a book. Maybe you are a collector. Maybe you are a bookseller. Maybe you want to impress that special someone. Maybe you have a table that wobbles. The first thing one must do is to identify one's needs. What type of books do I need? What condition do I need them to be in? What price point do I need to find them at? This will be the first douse on your divining rod, suggesting where to start ambulating towards. Let us begin on the ground floor. For the enterprising young second-hand bookseller amassing their inventory, or the truant library borrower who needs to fill his plate on a budget, have no fear. Books are everywhere. Go to thrift stores, flea markets, estate sales, dollar cards, library book sales, antique malls. Strip malls with paperback exchanges can be troves of quality genre fiction. Try this ritual. Enter the strip mall store filled with the dollar pocket paperbacks. Find Danielle Steele over in Romance. Invert her initials and you will remember the great Samuel Delaney across the shop in science fiction. To his right is Philip K. Dick, fighting with the great Thomas Dish. The Stugatsky brothers may be punching up at Neil Stevenson. Octavia Butler could be wondering why Edgar Burroughs has so much more real estate. All of a sudden, this cast-aside corner of the literary galaxy has become a teeming den of promise. If you don't see familiar friends, look for familiar uniforms. No Raymond Chandler or James Crumley in the mysteries. Start zooming out and looking at the spines. Barry Gifford's 1980s Black Lizard series, for example, is easy to spot in a crowd for its distinctive spine design. Certain publishers have followings, just like authors. Books are everywhere. This leads us to another point. Only buying the books that you already know is for the weak. If you are coming up empty-handed, take a deep breath. Hmm. See where your eyes and gut naturally guide you. Read the back covers. Flip through the words within. If something seems compelling to you, it might to someone else as well. And if you take it home and read it and your gut proved out, you can make that rarest thing a genuine recommendation. Do you feel now the paper bustling below the surface? That isn't the Earth's core rumbling with latent energy. It is the backstrip of life itself. The benefits of this type of scouting are that books are so plenty and so often undervalued. They can often be had for a song. It can be a fulfilling way to spend a day. It fits perfectly on the lifestyle of a modern flaneur like one of his white gloves. But it can be a frustrating and time-consuming way to scout. Oftentimes it is worth your time to skip the scrounging and look at books that have already been filtered by someone else. We come now to the open shop. First, familiarize yourself with the shop's pricing. Not all shops are priced the same. Sometimes you will find their prices more than amenable to you across the board. Sometimes it will be harder to find a foothold in their inventory. Pay attention to the specialties of the owner. If they seem to value certain sections in particular, you might find gold in what they have turned their back on. Don't assume because someone is a specialist means they are all-knowing. It is rare to find the Americana dealer who knows or even cares to know the value of their mimeographed poetry chapbooks. By the same coin, the dealer in modern first editions might leave their ephemeral flanks unguarded. This is where you strike. Look far and wide. In poetry, you don't skip the spineless, you pull out the chapbook. You 
You smell it. You examine it. Is it priced low because it is so rare that there is no comparable example to price against on the internet? These are the thoughts of the true hunter. Keep in mind that many dealers will offer a reciprocal discount to others in the trade. You must summon the courage to inquire. And while you are inquiring, keep in mind the most valuable fact of books. They are heavy. They are often inert. Most booksellers have more than they know what to do with. You must always come to the golden question. Is there a back room I could sniff around in? <laughs> the back room. The uncatalogued piles. The stacks of unpriced and unresearched material that is often as old as the bookstore itself. The work you are saving them from having to do. This is the architectural site of what Kropotkin, the anarchist prince, called mutual aid. If you spend time digging around there, you can leave there with both parties as satiated as a good meal or a good roll around. The owner might feel they helped along some young upstart and shed some of the inventory they'd grown so tired of looking at, they'd become allergic to cataloging it. While you have alchemized the material into that most scintillating thing, something new to you. This is a foreshadowing of the same effect your customer will have when, some years later, they buy it off your own discounted clearance rack. Some will say all this on the ground advice is just fluff and nonsense. <laughs> That you can download an app and indiscriminately scan UPC codes listening for the ka of an algorithmically evaluated, sealable title. But do not be lured by the barcode like a turkey to the hunter's call. If you get out into the field and hone these skills, you can learn the natural rhythms of the book world, for the book world is an ecosystem. And if you must take to the internet for your book hunt, there's only one website the real professionals use. Better read than deadbooks.com.